I think obviously coming on the heels of Butler, Pennsylvania, that was clearly a communications failure. This is going to probably be observed in very much the same light. I think that that's unfortunately not the case in this situation. I think the protection worked. Um, you know, we can't be everywhere at all times, right? There's, you know, the, the, we, these are still human beings and there are limitations to what human beings can do. There are limitations to resources. So in my opinion, you know, having been in that job and knowing how tough it is to, and the pressure and the, uh, the demands, right, on an agent from day to day, uh, I see this as a protective uh, a win. Unfortunately, I think you're going to see that many people are going to see it as yet another failure, and I just don't see it that way. The, the fact that he's, you know, having some protection, right, so he's bringing a vest, he's kind of setting up, whether he uh, was kind of caught off guard, he wasn't wearing the vest at the time, so whether he was using it kind of a blocking element, uh, I wouldn't say it was extremely sophisticated, but it certainly wasn't, you know, an amateur attempt. He had made some level, of, there was some level of planning that went into this. He'd obviously identified a location where he might be able to set up where he could potentially not be observed easily. So I think you're going to find that there was some significant pre-attack surveillance that had been done, knowing that former President Trump regularly visited this golf course and that this would be a, a likely location where if you caught it at the right time, you might be able to make an attempt. You know, I think obviously on a golf course, it's probably fairly flat, right? Especially the golf courses in Florida tend to not be as hilly. There may be some trees and some other, you know, coverage. He was also on a, ch a chain link fence, which would give you kind of some ability to stabilize a weapon if you're actually using the chain link fence as kind of almost a benched position. So with a scope, if he's trained to shoot, that's not, you know, a, a, a it's a difficult job, but certainly not impossible. I think what they're trying to do in some of these situations is limit the impact on the surrounding areas. So if you see where this course is at, it's kind of along two different, you know, main streets. So certainly the president does want to close off streets so that, he, so that he can play golf. So I think the Secret Service and local law enforcement is trying to do the best they can to kind of keep that bubble as small as possible to allow them to do what they need to do, but also to limit the impact that it's gonna have on the surrounding areas as well. You know, you're gonna see the motorcade, right? So obviously it's it's hard to move in secretive when you're moving a, a person that gets protection. So you're gonna see police cars start to move in that direction. If you're paying attention, you're gonna to start to see an increased police presence. You're gonna to start to see an increased agent presence. So if you're kind of paying attention to that area, you'd kind of be keyed into the fact that, hey, something's likely happening here. Not to mention it's a course that he regularly plays. Given the location that he's at on the course, it would make sense that if he notices this movement, that he tries to set up as quickly as possible, which if you think about it, hole five or six, maybe, you know, he's planning to kind of catch him on the, uh, you know, within the first five or six holes of the course. So even if he didn't even know he was there until he started playing, he would still have the ability to kind of get into that area where he was at and where he was eventually, you know, identified by the agents. Well, I think that the thing we have to identify in this is the protection work, right? The agents were out in front. You know, they were able to identify the threat. They were able to engage with the threat. Certainly the fact that he was able to get where he was, you know, is, is going to be examined. I know that the Secret Service is trying to, you know, increase the number of resources, not only human resources, but also technology resources to really leverage everything that's available to be able to increase their ability to protect by really creating force multipliers, right? You can only hire so many people and get them trained you know, and it, there's only so many people that are qualified to be Secret Service agents because of background and because of, you know, the ability to qualify for that position. So to try to do more with less, I know that they're trying to bring in, you know, some retired agents uh, to, to supplement what they kind of have uh, as existing, you know, current agents. So I think since Butler, Pennsylvania, the Secret Service has really tried to increase the level of protection. Uh, I believe today they they mentioned that they may have doubled the number of agents that they would typically have maybe a year or two ago. So they're certainly increasing the the you know protective um, tempo. It's just a matter of you know you can't eliminate all threats. That's just the reality of the world that we live in.